Hello friends, today's topic is about respiratory regulation of pH. So already we have seen that our blood pH that is ranging from 7.35 to 7.45. So how this respiratory system that will regulate our blood pH that we will look in this video. So basically this respiratory regulation that is called a second line of defense. We have already seen that buffer system of our body which is working as a first line of defense. So whenever the initially pH changes that first line of defense that is buffer system will work. But again, if it is not controlled with the help of buffer, then the second line of defense will be activated that is respiratory regulation. So that respiratory regulation that is basically work with the help of the spatial pressure of carbon dioxide. So this carbon dioxide will affect our chemoreceptor. So rate of respiration is controlled by this chemoreceptor, chemoreceptor in the respiratory center, which are very sensitive to change in the pH of the blood. So simple that pH of blood is altered that will affect our chemoreceptor and that will lead to the affection of our respiratory rate. So respiratory rate normally that is in a range of 12 to 16 per minute. But this respiration can be increased or decreased as per the pH to maintain the pH. So how exactly this pH is maintained that we will look. So when there is an acidosis, simple we have seen that normal pH range that is 7.35 to 7.45. But pH is falling down from 7.35 towards the 7.3 or less than that then respiratory center will be stimulated and that can lead to the hyperventilation means excessive carbon dioxide will be eliminated from the our body and that elimination that is helping to maintain pH against toward the normal range of 7.35 to 7.45 so exactly reverse will occur in the high pH means pH going towards more than 7.45 then what happened hypoventilation will occur means carbon dioxide will not be eliminated from the body and this carbon dioxide will remain inside the body and that is helping to again maintain our pH nearby 7.35 to 7.45. So exactly how this maintenance is occurring. So this respiratory system will work with the accordance with one important protein that is hemoglobin. The most important function of hemoglobin that already you are knowing that is transportation of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So what happened inside the plasma and inside the red blood cell at the tissue level that you have to know. So at tissue level what happened inside the plasma and red blood cell? Simple. At the tissue level various tissue that will undergo the various metabolic process and due to this metabolism what happened? Generally carbon dioxide is generated. That will carbon dioxide will go from the plasma and from the plasma it will enter inside the red blood cell. Inside the red blood cell this carbon dioxide will combine with the water molecule with the help of this carbon carbonic anhydrase enzyme and that will make carbonic acid that is H2CO3. Now this H2CO3 will be again broken down with the help of same enzyme carbonic anhydrase and form H plus that is proton and bicarbonate ion that is HCO3 minus. Now this HCO3 minus that is important base of our bicarbonate buffer system that already we have seen in buffer system of our body. So this bicarbonate that will go outside of the red blood cell in the plasma and that is helping to maintain our bicarbonate buffer system that is also a part of regulation of our pH. Now when HCO3 minus will go outside what happened there is a one negative charge is going outside we have to maintain equilibrium. So what happened one chloride will enter inside the red blood cell and that is called a chloride sift that is also asked in the exam and in the viva what is chloride sift in relation to this acid base balance. So chloride will enter to maintain our charge of the red blood cell. So when this chloride will enter that will again helping to maintain charge of the red blood cell. Now whatever this proton is generated this proton will combine with the hemoglobin and that will form HHB. Now that whole RBC from the tissue it will be transported to the lung. So exactly what happening that we will look. So there is a no net loss of gain of the negative ion in form of a bicarbonate or chloride and that is helping or that is also explaining dominant membrane equilibrium. So in the lung when RBC reach at the lung level what happen that whole process will be reversed. So hydrogen which is combined with the hemoglobin that is HHB from that hydrogen will be removed and that will combine with the bicarbonate ion that is HCO3 minus. So when it is combined what happen H2CO3 means bicarbonic acid will be generated. Again from the carbonic acid carbon dioxide will be removed and water molecule will be generated. So that's carbon dioxide which is generated that will pass into the alveoli and eliminated from the body. So that whole process this carbon dioxide which is entering the red blood cell as a metabolic process that carbon dioxide will be eliminated with the help of this alveoli and that will be expelled out. So in addition what happened there is a what are the reduced hemoglobin. So initially what are this HHB this reduced hemoglobin that will combine with the oxygen and this oxyhemoglobin is again go back at, to, at the tissue level. 
and providing the oxygen to the tissue so that is simple what happening at the tissue level at the lung level and when this hco3 minus that is going inside the red blood cell that is also related to the reverse chloride shift so exactly what happened at the lung level that we will do so these are the alveoli cell so with the help of this alveoli oxygen will enter inside the red blood cell when oxygen is entering inside the red blood cell this oxygen will combine with the hhp so when oxygen is combined with the hemoglobin this oxyhemoglobin will be generated but simultaneously with this proton will be separated this proton will combine with the hco3 minus and this hco3 minus will be provided from the plasma when hco3 minus enter inside the red blood cell chloride will go again outside of the cell that is called reverse chloride shift this bicarbonate ion that is combined with the H plus and make a carbonic acid this carbonic acid is again broken down with the help of same enzyme carbonic anhydrase and that will make water molecule and carbon dioxide this carbon dioxide will be eliminated to the alveoli so that is exactly how this carbon dioxide is eliminated with the help of this hemoglobin and this chloride shift and reverse chloride shift is explaining this donor membrane equilibrium now this respiratory regulation that is a part of this respiratory system that is ultimately targeting to regulation of our pH within a range of this 7.35 to 7.45. Whenever there is a metabolic acidosis what happen? There is an excessive carbon dioxide is generated and due to excessive carbon dioxide what happen? Excessive carbonic acid will be generated. There is a more carbonic acid or more carbon dioxide is produced as compared to our ability to excrete out or elimination of carbon dioxide. So what happen? More carbonic acid will be generated generated and that that can lead to the metabolic acidosis or particularly acidosis will be generated if problem in the respiratory system that can lead to the respiratory acidosis exactly opposite can happen if there is a production of carbon dioxide is less but there is a more number of carbon dioxide is expelled out of our body then what happens this carbon dioxide will be decrease in our body less number of carbonic acid will be there inside our body and that can lead to the alkalosis now this carbon dioxide is basically responsible for the majority of hydrogen ion produced by the metabolism therefore the respiratory system is involved in the control of hydrogen ion simple you have to remember when there is a acidosis to control this acidosis our body will try to eliminate more carbon dioxide with the help of hyperventilation when there is an alkalosis means during that time h plus concentration is decreased and that h plus concentration will be again maintained or uh, within going towards a normal normalization with the help of uh, increasing carbon dioxide level inside the body and that is possible with the help of hypoventilation so that is how exactly respiratory center that is regulating the ph by controlling our respiratory rate which is with a range of 12 to 16 respiratory rate per minute so that's all about respiratory regulation of our body